Day do you happy weekend. It's coming. It's Friday night, January 8th. We're going to talk about some football. We're going to go through all of these wild card games and do some analysis. This is the time where I spend going over everything. I just do it while I'm recording. I haven't really looked at this too much, but let's talk about that and how we can dig through the NFL algorithm to try to get some intelligence about this weekend's games and what can we do and explain kind of how to use this thing. Because I always like teaching people how to use Excel how to organize data and, and how to make good decisions, right? So let's talk about the games. Let's start with Saturday first. So on the slate for Saturday, we have, we have, let's unfreeze this stuff for a second. We're gonna unfreeze everything so we can scroll a little bit better and you guys can see it on the screen a little better. Sometimes it's good to do this. So on Saturday, we have Rams and Seahawks, Washington and Tampa Bay, Indianapolis and Colts. We have point projections here. The point projections are, are going to be the most reliable. It actually, by win score, which is a, a kind of like a season um, season stat way of looking at things, all of these teams are supposed to lose according to win score. But in point projections, it's a little bit different story. It has the Rams beating the Seahawks. Interesting, because the Rams defense is a little better than we think. It has Washington losing in a high-scoring game to Tampa Bay, which is kind of weird. I didn't think the Washington would put up that many points. I do think Tampa Bay is going to put up a lot of points. But we're going to take a look at what we're going to do to rosters in a second here as well. It has Indianapolis losing this game to Buffalo, but losing it by four as opposed to the six-and-a-half-point spread. So that's what it's saying right now when, when as we are looking at these games, we are looking at all of the players who are questionable – would be playing in the scenario we just mentioned. Well, let's remove questionable players. And one of the reasons why I like to do this sometimes is if they're questionable, they're, they're hurt somewhat for a reason, and they might not be as productive as they would be always. So kind of an all or nothing way of looking at it is just remove them all and see what that does to the algorithm. So let's refresh and take a look. Well, it makes Indianapolis beat Buffalo, which is intriguing, because it means Buffalo might have some injuries that we didn't know about. It creates a tie game here between the Rams and the Seahawks. So the, C the Rams still cover three, depending on how this game gets won. And Washington loses by five here, making a little bit more sense. Now, that being said, um, I have some pre preconceived notions about what I want to do with these games, but let's dive into why this is happening. Why is Indianapolis favored to win by three when questionable players are out, yet when questionable players are all in, it ends up being Buffalo winning? Who's questionable and why, basically? When you go back here and refresh, you see that it's a four-point lead for win for Buffalo. Well, as we open up Buffalo and look to see what is going on with Buffalo's situation, Let's go A to Z, find Buffalo right here. Buffalo has Cole Beasley, who does not look like a football player. It's Stephon, all right, Stephon Diggs is questionable with an oblique, no way. If Stephon Diggs is not running at 100%, then you got serious problems, because this guy is making this team right now. So that's interesting to see. I don't know if that's one of those where like, he's all right and they're just throwing it on there, but these are two big, big players. and. If they're not at 100%, I mean, this is why football is so game time. These guys are getting hurt all the time. They are, they are really putting their bodies out there. So I can see why that's happening. So what that makes me think is that this Buffalo money line, for example, like if we open up all the games and you see all the odds in every single direction for, for these games, you can see that the line for Indianapolis is plus 245. That's actually pretty good based on the injuries that we just saw, and maybe even plus six and a half. Now, is Stefan Diggs going to walk all over Indianapolis? Probably not. Indianapolis defense is decent. So I'm, I'm tempted to look. I mean, I did this last week, and I kind of like what it did. I like looking at it without questionables. I really do. And in that sense, it says Colts plus six and a half, and you might even win the game with them. So and now after looking at this, I can kind of sign on to that. Uh, the Colts are not a terrible team. Buffalo's good, but I mean, they've been running over all people. <sighs> I don't, I, tough, but I can see why if you're going to be messing around on the spread in this game, you want to take Indianapolis plus six and a half. That's what it seems like. Crazy. 
Now, Rams Seahawks situation. I like how this comes out to be a tie. I was wondering, what do you do in this game? The Rams defense looks decent. Um, is anybody hurt on uh, on Seattle? What's going on here? Seattle. Rashad Penny, just questionable with the knee. Other than that, they're pretty good. With the Rams, you got no golf. You got the other. Question, oh, it's questionable. We might even play. Oh, interesting. So here's another thing that I was thinking of doing, um, which we probably should do here. So there are only these, uh, if we look at Saturday and Sunday, there's only these 12 teams, right, that are part of this list. I was thinking, well, why don't we remove the quarterbacks that aren't playing? Like, let's look at just quarterbacks for a second. And the teams that are playing are, let's see if I can remember them all, Buffalo, Chicago, Cleveland, Green Bay is not playing this weekend. Indianapolis, Charger, uh, Chiefs are not playing this weekend. Rams, New Orleans, Pittsburgh, Seattle, Tampa Bay, Tennessee, and Washington. Three, six, nine. Oh, three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Who did I miss? Who did I miss? Who did I miss? Dallas, Carolina, Baltimore. Baltimore's play this weekend. So that's 12. So as we look at everybody here and we start to look at the quarterbacks, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is we're not, we shouldn't be including all quarterbacks if some quarterbacks aren't playing, right? Because they're second stringers and they're probably not going to be playing. I think it's a good idea to remove the second stringers. So we've got an interesting situation in Washington with, I mean, let's open up everybody. You're going to see all the quarterbacks and what we need to do with them right here if we bring in name so we'll give you name and injury status so tyler huntley on the ravens is not probably going to be playing so let's get him out of there matt barkley on the bills is probably not going to be playing on the bears i think it is trubisky however i'm tempted to leave in Foles and trubisky because i think they both play around so let's just get rid of tyler bray but leave the other two even though that might slightly increase their point projections a little bit because we're adding a second quarterback in their roster. Uh, I don't know what to do here. Case Kim probably not playing, right? Indianapolis, F F Jacoby Brissett, does he play at all? I'll leave him in because he's only a point one anyway. The Rams, what do you do with this? Do you leave them both in or do you say Goff's not playing? I, I, that's a game time decision. I want to remove Goff for a second and see what that does. Saints, you want to leave Breeze and Hill, but you want to get rid of Jameis Winston. So let's do that. Steelers, I think Big Ben is all right. I'll get rid of Joshua Dobbs for sure. Let's just do that. Seahawks, you can get rid of Geno Smith, even though he's not contributing anyway. Uh, I oh, what do you do with Tampa Bay? How much is Blaine Gabbert playing? I don't know the answer to this. Is I don't, I'm surprised. Is he playing a lot? I don't know what to do here. But let's remove Blaine Gabbert for a second. Assuming Brady plays the whole game. Logan Woodside on Tennessee can go. And on the Washington Football Club, Heineke probably going to be playing. Hask Haskins can go. He gone. So let's leave that. Now Now that we've removed all of those, um, all those quarterbacks, what we're going to do is, what else are we missing? There we go. We're going to go back and we're going to refresh and we'll see what happens to the scores. The answer is, oh, we didn't talk about Sunday. We may as well leave it up here and talk about it. Um, so the Steelers and the Browns likes the Steelers to cover um, at home. So it is saying that. Ravens to beat the Titans in this scenario by five and then only have to cover three. That's going to be an interesting game. Really likes the Ravens over the Titans. Somehow it continues to like the Bears over the Saints. I noticed this. I sent, when I sent the email out, I was like, LOL at the Bears. Like, does anybody think that's going to happen? Vegas doesn't think that's going to happen. So the Bears plus 10 points. Are you kidding me? That... I gosh, I don't want to make the Bears my pick of the day. Um, but Bears plus ten, given what this is showing, is is it's like the best pick of the day. It doesn't think New Orleans walks all over them, even though this game's in New Orleans. 
How about that? Washington beats Tampa Bay in this scenario with with extra quarterbacks. I don't know about that. What if we get rid of um, right? What if we get rid of Alex Smith because he's not playing probably, right? If we get rid of Alex Smith and go back and do that, Washington loses by one again. I'm surprised it's making it this close of a game. So it keeps saying Washington plus eight. Uh, it keeps saying Rams plus three, but thinks that this is going to be decided by by a last score. So it's this is a tough game. If anything, I say take the Rams plus one forty five because it's going to go either way, and you'd rather just you know you're you're probably if you're going to win this game, you're going to win it with the Rams winning and not win it with the points. I think. Um, and then yeah, you get your Indianapolis Buffalo situation with Buffalo winning by two, but you, but this is a tough game to pick. So, 10 minutes in, what have we learned? Um, we've learned that the Browns are, a, are, are, the Steelers are a bigger favorite over the Browns than you would think. That kind of is consistent with reality in that you think about the Steelers winning and you think about the Browns blowing stuff. So this kind of makes sense in my mind, and maybe the Steelers cover the six. It's less than a touchdown. I, I'd rather just take the Steelers to win if you've got it on round robin. This uh, loving Baltimore over Tennessee is where some value is. They are a favorite. Hmm. There, there isn't really a lot of value there. I take it back. Away teams. The Bears plus 10. It just says it's, that's a lot of points, and it doesn't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. It thinks the, def the, the Chicago's defense somehow stands up. I, I, I don't know. This one might be the like crazy upset of the day that's coming. I mean, can you imagine if Chicago wins, and I'm like, yeah, I already said to take us. No, none of us took it. Like we were like, no way. But I, I'm so we're just, I don't know. That's weird. That's something the algorithm's doing. And Rams tying or barely beating by like a fraction of a point. No, actually, it's actually in favor of the Seahawks. It's twenty six point one. But if we go back. And we get rid of the questionables like I want to do as well. Get this. And the, the Bears win this game again. Still unbelievable. This is going to be the talk of the weekend. Did the Bears somehow beat the Saints? That game is on Sunday, I think. It's Rams, Washington, and Buffalo tomorrow, right? Yeah. Washington plus 8, Bears plus 10. Tough game here. Tough game here, but it says Ravens minus three. So this one by seven. And Steelers to win, but it also says they cover the six straight up. It says it's the biggest game of the week. All right, guys. That's the NFL update for Wild Card Weekend 1. I'll do another one for Wild Card Weekend 2 in between all the other things. But, um, I mean, it's interesting to look over. If you want to subscribe, you can still buy this thing for 30 bucks. I think I'll lower the price because we only have two, three, like, three more weeks of playoffs after this, I think. Um, but there's some value here because I would never have thought that the Bears plus 10 over the Saints is anything I'd want a part of, but in every single iteration, and I, I mean, there's, I remember videos earlier in the year where I talked about how we're always wrong with the Bears, and the Bears went and covered like two or three games right after that. Like, don't listen to me. Listen to the algorithm. It's saying plus 10 is, is your best, really your best pick of the day by margin. I mean, they're supposed to win by one. They're essentially an 11-point margin here. So Bears plus 10 is the pick of Saturday. Somehow I will find out if I'm going to be hanging myself on a noose from that one. But um, that's what it says. It even says Bears to win. It keeps saying that, right? Look, look at this. We put in questionables. The Bears still win. Um... You, you take out all the secondary quarterbacks and go back to more of a similar point projection strategy that we use throughout the year. What happens? They still win by a point. Unbelievable. All right. Just trust the algorithm. Good luck, everybody.